Good morning, everybody. Charlie here with Red Summit RF. And today I'd like to introduce you to a new tool that you can use to learn Morse code. It's called the CW Hotline, and it's produced by Ham Radio Solutions. And you may recall Ham Radio Solutions is the company that, uh, that came out with V-Band. For those of you who don't know what V-Band is, it's a website that you can use to communicate back and forth with people via Morse code without having to get on the air. You can either do that through the keyboard of your computer or you can purchase a uh, USB connector uh, that you can plug into your computer and then plug your, your uh, Morse code key into that and then send your, your uh, Morse code back and forth over the computer. You can learn more about uh, V-Band uh, from a video I'll put right up here and also by going to their website at, at uh, hamradio.solutions forward slash V-Band. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the CW hotline. And in this little box, you can do a lot of fun things that uh, you're not able to do with V-Band. This box allows you to plug a, a uh, CW paddle into it through this 3.5 millimeter jack, but you could also, with the kit, build a uh, internal, or, or uh, it sticks out right here, a uh, straight key or a iambic paddle, uh, just an inexpensive one. It comes with part of the kit. I chose not to do that. But uh, this, this box, what it'll do is it will allow you to connect uh, directly with somebody else, a friend or somebody, and uh, you don't even have to use V-Band. Uh, you can connect with V-Band or you can connect directly to somebody else with one of these boxes over the internet and send Morse code back and forth with them. And a third uh, neat little thing is you can use this offline as a, um, as a practice uh, oscillator. So a lot of different uses for this, but uh, I wanted to make sure that you knew about it and uh, point you in the right direction. Uh, the website is hamradio.solutions forward slash CW hotline. And on that page, you'll find all of the information on how to order this and all of the uh, user and uh, build instructions are also on that page. You can, you can download them and, and, uh, and build the kit and then figure out how to put it on the air. But today what I'm going to do, I, I ordered one of these, I have it, and I am going to uh, build it and I'm going to show you how to get it on the air and then I'm on, on the air, uh, online, and then I'm going to uh, have a QSO with somebody without uh, going through V-Band or without going on the air. So stay tuned, I'll show you how to build it and uh, get it set up and uh, have a QSO coming up. So let's get going then with the CW Hotline. Assembly manual is right here and here's the schematic. And I'm going to pull the uh, kit out that I received in the mail. And we'll get going. Got the PCB board here. These paddles that we may or may not use at this point, I don't know. We'll set those over here with some other stuff. Aha, here we go. All the parts. I don't think I'll need this box either. I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces, which I don't need right now, in there, as well as this which I don't think I'll need right now. We're going to do some soldering first. So put that all right over here. Get this PCB board ready. Okay, we have the PCB board loaded onto this uh, holder. And the first step here says that we are supposed to solder on the, uh, or install R1 and R2 uh, into the uh, board. So let's do that first. Okay, so we have the two uh, 680 ohm resistors that will go in R1 and R2, which is right over here. So let's get those in.
Okay, next is, since we got these soldered, flip this back over, and we'll take this off. Our next task is to uh, get that 10K resistor in R3. So see, R3 is going to be right here. And the uh, 10K resistor is brown, black, orange. All right, three resistors down. What's next? Next on our list is going to be a resistor four and five. So resistor four is going to be a 680 ohm resistor. The instructions say that uh, some kits have the 680 ohm resistors for R1 and R2, these right here. And some kits have the uh, 1K ohm resistor. And that's what these are right here that are in, in the... Uh, in the box or they were sitting down here so i should have probably used the 1k ohm resistors although on the forum in uh, the uh, discord channel it says that it doesn't matter it just controls the brightness of the led so you know go with the 1ks if you have them if not you know you can use the 6 8 whatever you have but in my case i had uh, i have a whole bunch of resistors so i just uh, use the 680 there uh, on these and and I, these are going to be my extras now i'm just going to test put, put them aside now because i won't need them anymore and what I have here is another 680 ohm resistor. And then right here is a, uh, what is that, a 330 ohm resistor. It's an orange, orange, brown. This one is uh, like, the, like R1 and R2 is a blue, gray, brown. So we'll get those in next. That works and flipping it back over we now have the five resistors in that we need next on our agenda is going to be the hundred is going to be the uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor that goes in C1 so let's see if we can find C1 here that's not it where is C1 there it is right here C1 so a C, so then this uh, 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor is going to be labeled 104, and I don't know what that is. It's so hard to see, but I, there's only one capacitor in here. It looks like so. Let me let me look at it under the microscope. And make sure it says 104, and it does. that back take off the masking tape okay next we're going to do the uh, 2222a NPN resistors those go into the um, Q1 and Q2 uh, let's see if I can find where those are Q1 and Q2 there's Q1 right here here's Q2 right here and so orientation matters on transistors, so we got to make sure we put those in properly. Luckily, the PCB board has the flat side on the, on the uh, board that matches the flat side here, so it makes it easy. There's a, there's a, you can see this is a flat side to the, to the uh, transistor. All right, so we're going to make sure that the flat side is on this side, flat side here, not over here. Not on this side, but on this side, so it matches up with the flat side in the PCB. Drop that in. Same thing goes for this one. So Q1 and Q2 transistors are in. Flip those over. Yeah, those are going to be tricky. Those are those are really close together. I might have to take a seat here, pull up the chair, and take a seat on this one. And it's just tough. I think I got it.
I'm going to have to inspect this really close and make sure that I don't have any shorts in this. So that'll be my next step here. Let me take a look at that and come right back. I got to put that under the microscope. All right, well, I inspected it under the microscope. It does appear that I did a good job on that soldering. I sure hope so. So I'm going to clip these leads off. And I already took the tape off when I went to go take a look. So here we are. Uh, the transistors are in now as well. What's next on the agenda? Let's uh, take a look. All right, our next step is to take these uh, jacks um, and put them on. They're, they're going to be all the same. J1, J2, and J3, these are TRS jacks. They're all the same, so it doesn't matter. So there's J2 right here. There's J1 right here. And there's another one that goes, uh, where does... J, that's J1, J2, where's J3? Right in, the, right in the middle, I guess, right here, huh? Well, next it says to um, to install the uh, header posts onto the PCB, so let's do that next. Okay, yeah, no, the header posts actually, that's these right here. There's, they're both here, so this, this small side goes down, and it goes right here, and right here, and we'll tape those and make sure they are correct. I'm going to, you got to make sure these are lined up pretty good. So I'm going to go like this on either side. Instructions say to only solder one at first, one pin, and make sure that they're on flush. So I suppose we'll do that. Like that, that's what it says to do. I'll flip it over and we'll make sure that it, the, let's see, is that good? Yeah. What we need to do is bring in the, um, the uh, ESP8266, which is a little circuit right here. Uh, right here. And we got to measure with that, so we'll do that. I wonder if this is if there's an ESD an ESD issue. I guess not. I would have they would have said if there was ESD in, involved here. So uh, I guess I wonder. Let me. I better check this. Let me check the documentation to make sure. There's no ESD issue with uh, with this chip before I start fiddling with it. Okay, I didn't read anything about an ESD issue, but I'm still going to take precaution. I have this cable here that's just to ground. I'm going to plug that in underneath uh, on the wall first. And then after I do that, then I'm going to bring this uh, ESD mat over here. And I'm going to connect that. And then I'm going to... Go ahead and put this strip, this strip, this wristband on, just to be sure before I got, I start filling around with stuff with this. Uh... All right, so it says um, after we put those in, ensure they're perpendicular and flush, and then test the PCB and make sure that the it fits, and then solder the rest. So I'm gonna open this up.
and this will go I guess like it's gonna go like this I'm pretty sure oh yeah there we go so they are they're they're pretty good all right I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and finish soldering then All right, that's it. Next it says, insert the blue uh, ESP8266 PCB onto the long sides of the previous headers post and, and be sure to match the silk screen with the reset button nearest to the upper left corner. And solder each pin into the hole onto the top of the face of, the, of that uh, PCB and it's not necessary to trim the remaining exposed pins. Okay, all right, so it appears as though we're going to go like this. Uh, there's this reset button right here, and that is going to go into uh, into the upper left. So, let's get that on there. Come on. Oh, my grabber's in the way. Let's move that. Let's see if we can still hold it on the edge there, maybe. There. Good. Slip this out and take a look at it at it under the magnifying glass to make sure there's no shorts in it. Next step is to insert the go ahead, I need to flip this over. I'll bring it here centered. Underneath here is two LEDs and a button. Um, I'm gonna put them up here. It says that one of these LEDs is gonna have to go on here. I think that's the next step. The shorter leg of this uh, uh, diode will also have usually does have a flat spot on, on the rim right here so there's kind of two ways to tell where the negative spot is on the diode and then you've got it or the led which it is a diode but then you've got to put it properly into here and let me see what the instructions say there's a square pad and a round pad let me just read it verbatim insert the green led into d1 on the other side of the PCB, the shorter lead nearest the flat side of the LED should go into the square hole. There we go. So the square hole is negative. So it goes like this. All right. That doesn't go all the way through. I wonder why. Well, there we go. Um, <clears throat> it also says it should not be flush with the PCB, but instead three sixteenths of an inch gap. And... Uh, so that you can make sure that it's proper inside the case. So I'm gonna have to get a measurement on that one. That's interesting. It's kind of hard to see, but these this LED I have anyway. There's a uh, it changes kind of it's like silvery from the top down to about uh, to like from it's kind of hard to show, but like part of the way down it changes from just like silver to like a darker color. That is about uh, four millimeters, and it calls for putting it at about five millimeters up from the PCB board. And so, you know, I if I put it right like that, I'm going to have to kind of tape the bottom here and figure this out because uh, this is interesting. It, it needs to be offset five millimeters or uh, three sixteenths of an inch so it can fit through the, the uh, box. I am going to tilt this sideways. And I have measured my LED, and it needs to be like, let me put some tape on the back side here and pull this. Well, actually, I'll need to do it on the front side here. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. That's where it needs to be. I'm going to see if I can zoom in with my cell phone and show you guys a little bit better. But, but uh, one way to do it is just to measure from the top of the PC board out to the bottom of the LED and that is going to be one you got to measure that 
distance to be five millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch. Next is going to be the other LED, I bet. Yep. Insert the red LED, same way as the as uh, with D1, that go, but this goes into D2. So here's that red one. And I'll try to make that one even. It's going to be the same, so same height. LEDs in place. Insert the button S1 SW1 on the same side as the PCB, or same side of the PCB as the LEDs. So, where'd that button go? It's up in here somewhere. Here it is. Same side. It goes into what I'm going to assume is going to be that. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be like a not flush, but I guess uh, what does it say like two millimeters or an eighth of an inch right like that I guess I'm just eyeballing this but I think it's gonna be all right Last, it says to install the two speaker pads marked with SP. Okay, so I'm going to stick the red wire through the square pad and the black wire through the round one. I'm just going to leave it like that. Get some masking tape and hold it down while I flip it over and try to solder this. Now, somehow we're supposed to tape this on with the pads that have been provided. There's a double-sided piece of adhesive that is provided in the kit. And one side of the sticker goes over those seven holes with a circle there. And then the other side you take off and place the back side of the speaker on it. So that the speaker should be facing away from the board rather than towards it. Now we're going to drill the holes in this case and get the uh, board mounted in it. So the first thing it asks us to do is to measure the squares, either as the either, either with the two centimeters or with the one inch. I like the one inch. I'm partial to that measurement. So yeah, we're looking like it is one inch. So that's good. So we know that this board, this uh, is, is the right size. And so the next thing we need to do uh, is we'll take this bottom piece out of this container and we're going to wrap this around this container here. So next step then is to get some scissors and uh, I got some here and we'll, we'll make the cut. Okay, so we have the cut here. N now what we need to do is wrap this and tape it to the box. And so I'm just gonna set this in the center here and put some tape on one side. I mean, let's do it right here on this side, maybe. And it goes right up to the edge, but not over. All right, so the holes then would be drilled into the box based on these templates. So next thing I need to do is get me a safety pin and we're going to put a hole in each one of these after this then we'll go out to the shed and we'll drill these holes out and I am not making it with the paddle so we'll leave that alone all right, out to the shed. Okay, so we're going to get the first bit. All holes will be drilled with the 5 64th 
drill bit. So we'll start with that, the 564th, and put that in, and then we will drill away on all these holes. Not sure if you can see those pinholes, but we got them all in here. Okay, so this is this is a uh, came out pretty good. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the bit to the next size up. All right, well, I already made a mistake here. Uh, <laughs> instructions say to drill out all but these uh, seven speaker holes with the larger ones. So I'll go ahead and do them all. Uh, these shouldn't have been drilled out that way, but I just skimmed over the word but, and that's what that's what it gets you. So I'm gonna drill the rest of these out now. So they're all <laughs> now uh, the uh, one eighth size, including the speaker holes. Oh well, let's see. The next thing is to enlarge the five side holes with one fourth. So the five side holes, that'd be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, those all go uh, to the next size up, which is the one fourth. So I'll go ahead and grab the one fourth out of here. And we'll throw that in instead. First, we're going to do the three sixteenth. Actually, we're going to we're going to go in, in stages here. We'll get the we'll get to this one fourth, but we don't want to crack it, so we're going to put that aside and go with the in, in, intermediate size here. All right, guys, that's it. I made one mistake which I can live with, and that's that they made these speaker holes a little too big. Doesn't bother me at all. So now the next thing is just kind of trim it up with an X-Acto knife or a, uh, a razor blade to get it to get all these holes properly fit uh, with this, the PCB. And so we'll go in back into the, into the uh, uh, house and we'll uh, get the PCB fit up. So we've got this pretty good. We just need to use the X-Acto knife and, and uh, carve this out just a little bit make sure it's nice and oval shaped I am not the uh, most craftiest person and not the most exact person so these holes may not line up that's okay with me we'll make it work well so I had to just kind of use the exacto knife to cut a little bit out of what this and this hole here to make sure it all fit properly not too much though so I'm gonna go ahead and and put this in it calls for four screws in each corner, one in each corner, once I have this in and set properly. It looks like that's it. And I was hesitant to put this, the screws in because just in case I didn't solder it properly, I needed to take the, the thing back out. But I think it'll be pretty easy to take out. Uh, this pack comes with the uh, CW hotline, uh, this uh, pack of parts. So I'm just going to grab four screws out of here. These smaller ones are probably the ones I'm assuming, and uh, get me get myself a screwdriver. Get me a good uh, looks like it's a little Phillips. All right, I think that's good enough. It's in there pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is plug this in and go over to the computer. Oh, one last thing. Let's go ahead and put the sticker on. The CW Hotline sticker. That goes right like this. All right, over to the computer to plug it in. Okay, before we plug in the box, I wanted to explain a few things about it. There are three 3.5 millimeter jacks on the back, and this one here on the right is for your CW paddle or a straight key. 
The middle one is just for an external speaker, and the one on the left is a key out, which allows you to send Morse code remotely, among other things. You could, uh, for example, get another box, and you could put, use one box and connect it to your radio, and then get another box and uh, connect it to your cell phone or to, an, to your key, and then remotely send uh, Morse code. Um, the, the green light here is uh, an indicator of Wi-Fi status. You have a connection to the CW hotline if the LED is flashing quickly or solid. And this red uh, LED uh, blinks with the dits and daws as they're sent and received in, through the box. This button here allows you to change the Morse code speed. Tap the uh, button and then use the dit pedal to, sh to slow down the speed and the daw pedal to increase the speed. And then tap the button again when you've got the speed that you want. All right, so let's plug this thing in and, and see what happens. Okay, so the CW hotline comes with this through uh, this uh, USB cable. So I'm going to plug in, and we'll see what happens. Uh, the, we should have a connection to a certain serial port that we need to do first. So let's see. All right. So when I connect uh, to CW hotline. There you go. See, there's two different serial ports. You gotta get the. the I choose this one, the USB COM3, and uh, select and then connect. Says to CH34 serial port. I'm at the refresh. Yeah connect all right so then the next thing it says is uh update firmware let's do that we oh i heard a uh, beep on the uh, uh cw hotline so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to read the current version checking all right 4.4 now i'm going to update the hotline settings Failed to read settings for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on here. There we go. All right, so all these settings have to be done. So SSID is going to be SSID of the local Wi-Fi address, point to the CW hotline, I shall attempt to connect. Okay, so the uh, SSID. Now the device key, <clears throat> a unique key provided by Hammer Solutions to access the server. Do not share this key with others. Well, I don't have the key. So what am I going to do? Okay, so you guys can fill out the rest, but uh, let me just mention two things. One, uh, the device key, uh, which is blurred out here, or should be, is something that you, well, I, I got it from uh, David via email. And uh, so reach out to support if you don't have yours. Somebody said that it comes in the kit somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So the second thing is this this link key. Uh, put V-band in there if you want to connect your box to V-band. And what you do is if you don't want to connect to V-band, but you want to connect directly with somebody else who has a box, then you change this to pretty much any unique name that you want. If you say, for example, you want to connect with Brian, uh, then you click you you put Brian in here and make sure both boxes, his and yours, uh, have Brian, and that pretty much creates a uh, connection between the two of you uh, so that you don't have to go through anything other than directly through the through the internet between the two of your boxes so uh, I, I put the call sign in there everything else should be good so once you get all feel it figured out then uh, then uh, you go ahead and update that and uh, it should take and then you should be connected okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect directly uh, with our box here, the CW hotline, to uh, Rob, W2ITT, in, uh, in Long Island. We're going we're gonna to go box, directly to box via the internet. 
and uh, not even use V-band. So that's what we'll do first. Okay, I've asked some. I've asked somebody to to send Kurt directly with me. Uh, his name is uh, Rob. Okay, now we're gonna hop over to the V band and we're gonna try it out there. You're you're on the V band hotline link. Right, 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 that's right. So let me see if I can send something here. I lost, I lost your call. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, so David, uh, we've got David on uh, real quick. And I just wanted to ask you, David. So, David, you're you're uh, one of the two people that runs the uh, V band and uh, is in, in, does the CW hotline as well. So, if somebody were to purchase the CW hotline and then uh, they ran into a problem at some point, what would you tell them to do in order to troubleshoot? I would say go to our Discord server and check us out on CW hotline. There's a channel for that, and if if you you know also besides cw hotline there if you're more comfortable with email just send us an email to support at hamradio.solutions okay so where would let's see so i guess you'd probably go to this website here um uh what is it ham radio solutions hamradio.solutions forward slash cw hotline and that's where all that information is and then the discord channel has got to be in there somewhere right a link to it yeah the discord channel is on uh ham radio solutions i believe it's actually let me look i think it's on the about of v band oh yep there it is right here join, our, join discord. our discord server yep and so you can get support right there as well all right good I just wanted. Uh, so, th is there anything else you wanted to say before we wrap it up? Then, no, that's that's it. You know, uh, we're we're here to help uh, by by way of the uh, Discord server or by way of support. And you know, anything we need to do, we'll we'll do to get you on the, on the air. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. And that wraps it up, folks. Uh, you can purchase one of these by going to hamradio.solutions forward slash CW hotline. I uh, bought mine a couple months ago, and I want to thank Bayan and uh, David for inviting me to be a part of their beta testing group. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll come back. Thank you for visiting my channel. And uh, my name is Charlie, uh, November Juliet 7 Victor with Red Summit RF, and we'll say 73 until next time. Bye bye.